Hi, this is Diane Spencer with Western Computer, and I'd like to go over another one of our tips for using D365. Today, we're going to talk about advanced bank reconciliation. So there's a couple things that we need to do in terms of setup before we can go through that process. If we go to cash and bank management parameters and go to bank reconciliation, in the time available to us today, we don't have time to delve into each of these and the options for when you would select something or not select something. So I would strongly suggest that you take a look at that. But this would be one option in terms of how you may set up the bank parameters for advanced bank reconciliation. The next thing we need to do is to set up bank transaction types and bank transaction groups. And this is useful to have whether you're using bank reconciliation or not, because it's a great way to do some reporting and querying on some of your bank transactions. This is also where if you are entering transactions during the bank reconciliation process, things like fees maybe that you had not done before you're going through the bank rec process, this is how you can automatically tell D365 which account those transactions should go to. But once you get the bank transactions set up, then you will probably want to group those bank transactions into bank transaction groups. And this is just broad general groupings of the bank transaction types you just set up. The next areas that we need to take a look at for setup before we can use the advanced bank reconciliation functionality is under setup. And there's a whole section of functionality that is available under the heading of advanced bank reconciliation setup. Let's take a look at these one by one. The bank statement format. I've already set up a bank statement format of BA-12, and BA-12 is a general widely used format for U.S. banks, and you can, will have to get the format from your bank if it's different than BA-12. The next thing we'll want to do is to look at transaction code mapping. And this is very important, and you will notice that this is by bank account, and it's actually usually by bank. So Chase may use a different series of codes and does Wells Fargo than does, you know, Merchants Bank, that sort of thing. And it's basically saying that on your bank statement, and particularly if you look at the electronic format that you'll be getting from your bank statement, each bank transaction type will have a code. So in this case, 012 ties is what the bank calls an electronic deposit. 017 is what the bank calls a wire transfer. And you can see that these map to the bank transaction types that we just set up. We've only got a couple here, but obviously your bank will probably use a dozen or more transaction types. So once we get the transaction code mapping done, then we'll want to take a look at the reconciliation matching rules. And this is where a lot of the setup that we just did comes into play. In this case, I only have one matching rule set up. You might have more than one for different banks, different types of banks, operating versus payroll, that sort of thing. And I just called it match. And so in this example, when the bank statement is imported and then D365 goes through the process of trying to automatically match or reconcile as many items as it automatically can, I'm saying the match it based upon the amount and not allowing any dollar amount difference that the dates can be different by two days. Look at the document number, which for checks would be the check number, the ACH, and the transaction type. And the transaction type is what we were just looking at, which is the 012 from your bank, which matches to my 02 code, which is my wire transfer code. The other thing is to be sure and activate. Once you set up matching rules, you will need to activate each matching rule. Once the rules are set up, you will need to put these rules into a matching set. Now, in this case, I've just got a really simple example, and so I only have one matching rule, but you could have multiple rules. Sometimes I do have really complex business processes. I put all my rules into one called exact. You might have different rules with different components, and that way you can mix and match them so it's easier as you're trying to build different levels of tolerance for maybe the different bank accounts that you do automatic reconciliation on. And again, I could have one grouping for my operating accounts, one grouping for my payroll accounts, that sort of thing. The last setup is actually in the bank account itself. So let's go over and let's take a look at our operating account. Under the section called reconciliation, I have marked it as, yes, I do want to use bank reconciliation 
if I want to allow any dollar differences, and this would override the parameters that I just set up. And then I would say for this particular bank, the statement format that I'm using, what I want to call this in the bank statements, this just allows me to bring these in. The default matching set, and remember when we were just looking at those, we had one called operating and payroll, and since this is an operating account, I want to use the operating matching set. And then in terms of the reconcile after import, it's just a question of how automatic you want this process to be. And you may want to have it be a little more manual until you're more comfortable with your rules and the whole process, and then maybe move it to automated at that point. And then the last thing that you need to do is go to bank statements under bank statement reconciliation. And I have already set one up to create one for a particular account, I would go through the process of putting in the opening balance and the ending balance the way you do for normal bank reconciliation. And then from here, I would say import statement, and it would follow all the rules, go to location identified that the bank statement would be ready, and you bring in the statement and go through your normal bank reconciliation at that point.